Hello, everybody. Just imagine what kind of uh, amazing discovery would it be to find um, an ancient city uh, where people lived a few million uh, years ago, maybe 10 million years ago or 20 or more. I mean, that would have such an impact on so many uh, branches of the science as we know it now. All the books of uh, ancient history uh, would be good uh, just for making fire in the winter. Also, um, all the teachings on uh, evolution. I mean, these were the times when the dinosaurs were walking the earth. I'm talking that time of historic period. And the fact um, that um, the underground and uh, rock cities in um, Turkey, they're in Cappadocia and many other regions, it's, they're, they're just all over the place, many of them. Um, I actually felt uh, so much fascinated by this idea that I decided to um, do my further personal research on it because uh, information uh, on this archaeological site is actually very scarce. Um, actually, I visited one of them myself many, many years ago when I was um, a teenager or something like that, a friend of mine told me um, uh, that uh, this is some new and very interesting place to visit, so come along, and I, I, I went there. I remember very little. Uh, all I remember is that uh, the tour guides told us that, you see, the Christians, they chiseled all that into the solid rock, to hide there and to pray, and I was naive. I believed that, um, you know, these scientists, they will know better than me, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't uh, uh, tell these things with all their authority. <laughs> Little did I know at that time that um, it's a normal practice in archaeology um, that when things get discovered and they do not fit um, the history um, the way they have decided to tell it to us, when such sites or artifacts are found, um, they, they do not get um, displayed for the public. They get locked in some sort of uh, museum basement and um, um, get kind of forgotten. They do not get mentioned in the history books and uh, uh, other official, so to say, sources. But what happens when the things are too big to be locked up, like full cities, like the full region in Cappadocia? That's rather large, no? Okay, so what I did now was um, I found all the information I could gather on internet, including lots of videos, pictures, and uh, whatever scientific research was published. And I looked very, very carefully at some of the pictures and the videos, and I reached to some quite um, important conclusions, which um, uh, I think are a proof of um, this extreme age of, of these sites, and I decided to share this research with you. So this is where is the Cappadocia region um, located um, on the map of Turkey. And the next are um, these um, very bizarre rock formations, like you see the white sort of hats on the top of the older rocks. Um, these white hats are some at least four million years old. That's where, when, well, that what, that's the time when they get got poured out of some volcano and covered these already strange formations that were below them. Here on this particular photo, you uh, please 
pay careful attention why the white hats have this uh, particular shape. It's because the rocks that were already there at that time, at least four million years ago, they already had this uh, cone-like shape sticking out and the white stuff only got formed around it. So we're already getting an idea about how did these formations look at the time the white caps were formed. Please remember that this is uh, very important and I will refer to this um, time and time again in my further um, um, research. Uh, so you notice the kind of um, rooms and parts of rooms and doors and windows. And uh, this is what you see on the surface and when you go inside you go into a gigantic underworld and this is kind of um, painting like kind of a map um, of just one of uh, these underground cities the one in Deran Kuyu at least uh, 20 floors 20 stories have been dug until now and there are more of them showing below that level <clears throat> however they are uh, full of uh, uh, soil and fallen stones and it's really not uh, easy to clean them up. Not to even mention how did they build it actually so many years ago, but um, we'll reach there as well. So some of this, um, what were on the ground, uh, underground cities once upon a time, some of them are still underground, um, Parts of them are sticking out now um, because apparently the ground level at that time was completely different. And with pink arrows on this particular photo, you can see parts of doors and windows that are kind of now coming out of the ground as the erosion uh, <coughs> takes away some of the what is now grass level. And archaeological excavations have been made and it definitely shows that, um, that what you see now uh, above ground, the same continues uh, below the ground level. Uh, and um, all these doors and windows practically lead to, to, to the earth, which, um, which is actually one of the proofs that um, uh, it's absolutely, there is no logic to say that some sort of uh, a current culture built this network of tunnels. Actually, many, many cultures have excavated part of the tunnels and have used them. Here you can see um, additional improvements, so to say, from Roman time from early Christians time, even until now many Turks uh, use parts of um, these premises to live in them actually. They have converted them to parts of uh, their homes. Uh, you don't need to be uh, any professional to notice h how different is the style of building from Roman times and um, the paintings done by the Christians, that this is a completely different uh, construction stage and the erosion is completely different. I mean, see how well are preserved the Roman style buildings, although they are made of um, much smaller stones and just notice the erosion on the really old um, underground cities. It, I mean, there is uh, no way they can compare with each other. It's obvious that the ones that were carved in the solid rock are extremely, extremely old. I mean, that type of erosion cannot be achieved within just a couple of thousand years. 
it, this is impossible. I, I'm not a specialist, but I just did a simple search on the rate of erosion. Of course, it depends uh, upon the type of stone and the type of location, but still we can see how the stones behave in this particular location and how much did they erode in one or two thousand years, that is from Christian or Roman time. And the erosion is minimal, while the erosion on the things that were carved into the hard rock, I mean, that's that's... Um, un uncomprehensible. We really need m literally millions of years to get this type of erosion, like um, half of the rooms are missing, that type of erosion. Erosion is measured in uh, centimeters uh, per thousand years. This is the way I, when I did the search, that's how they uh, measure the erosion when it is done, you know, by the elements. See for yourself the building on the left, how much did it erode in, let's say, 1,000 or 2,000 years, and the one on the right, which is carved in the solid. Actually, it's not so much on the right, it's in the middle, because on the very right we have another, so to say, modern building, only one or 2,000 years old. So to say that these things were carved in recent times by Christians or um, even Hittites, which was about 3,000 years ago, or Romans, that absolutely doesn't correspond to reality. This type of erosion cannot be achieved by any means within uh, just a couple of thousand years. I mean, just have a look at this particular remains of some sort of room that has been uh, a room probably uh, millions of years ago. Yes, some parts of it have fallen during an earthquake. Turkey is one of the shakiest places on Earth, uh, probably one of the countries with most frequent and strongest earthquakes. So on on the left where the arrow starts, yes, there are some sharp, uh, sharp edges. Obviously, um, parts of the building have fallen down in earthquake. However, on the right where the arrow points, you can see walls that have eroded gradually. You, they have eroded together with the full, uh, full wooden, uh, sorry, rocks sticking out of the ground. And remember that those rocks were not much different in shape for millions, at least for millions of years ago when they were covered with the white hats that I requested to pay attention to in the beginning of the video. And the erosion at the point of the arrow, just look at it. There is no way, I mean, the, the very rock has been like uh, molded to such an extent. I mean, the full rooms are missing. It's beyond any uh, comprehension how can anybody assert that um, this has been built just a couple of thousand years ago. There is absolutely no way this could have happened. Now on this um, photo we see again a fallen building or a fallen underground, part of underground uh, city. However, we see the sharp edges. Obviously, this is uh, uh, done by the earthquakes, uh, which are so frequent in Turkey. But again, just think for yourself, uh, how much did the earthquakes do to the Roman buildings uh, that I showed you earlier? The ones that uh, you see on the photos, and also the ones in general in Turkey, there are so many well-preserved uh, uh, Roman monuments uh, all over Turkey. They're not that fallen apart as uh, um, this rock formation. It proves that even if it was falling down with earthquakes, it really took a really much, much longer time than a couple of thousand of years. As the people who write the tour guides for modern Turkey are trying to suggest to us that uh, these tunnels were built uh, only a couple of thousand years ago. And just look at this particular photo. I mean, this was built 
such a long time ago that part of the rocks, you can see them standing at completely different angle. I mean, the door is turned almost upside down. Imagine what kind of abuse would have this rock taken on itself to to reach here. I, I cannot see, is it really attached to the uh, solid rock base? That means that um, the uh, parts of the earth crust have been moving uh, during the millions of years to uh, rotate this rock this much. Um, or even if we assume that it has uh, been rolled down by some sort of enormous earthquake, this surely hasn't happened recently, otherwise there wouldn't have been any um, buildings left from the Hattites or any other uh, recent time if uh, this much of earthquake has shaken Turkey lately. So obviously we are talking about really, really uh, far away in the past times. Now have a look uh, here. These remains of tunnels have been worn so heavily by the elements and this happened gradually. You can see how oval are the eroded uh, surfaces. So here we have definitely see a gradual uh, erosion. And again, just uh, think for yourself, for erosion, we, it's measured in centimeters per thousand years. How long would it take to really melt down these rooms? I mean, I, I have traveled really the world. I have seen really a lot of ruins, but this much of an extreme erosion, I have never seen anywhere. Yeah, it is possible like in Egypt on uh, the so-called uh, bastabas which are made of mud bricks. Yes, they look very similar. They look melted down, but they're made of, um, uh, how you call them, bricks that weren't even baked. <laughs> so it is a completely different story. This is a solid rock. Um, here again, we see <clears throat> that um, as these underground cities were showing on the surface and the elements, the wind and the water were eroding them, um, we, we can see that part of floors have been carried away. Um, with the um, arrows, you can see half a floor. Obviously, the other half uh, is blown away by the wind and who knows how many floors have been blown away like that. Obviously we are talking about extremely, extremely far away times, far away in the past. Such erosion is not observed on uh, stone uh, uh, items made within the few uh, thousand years of the past of now. Now this is uh, one of the rooms which is still much um, underground, deeper below underground, maybe in Birenquil or something like that. Look at this column. I mean, it, it isn't even column anymore. It has been so heavily eroded, but how did it happen? I mean, this has always been underground. It's not near the surface at all. This is not observed in caves. Uh, I mean, just the opposite in, in the caves, stalagmite and other formations are being formed. What the, the wind by itself doesn't uh, have that potency to erode the stone. No, the uh, stalagmites are, are still there. They have been formed for millions of years and we can still see them, they, they are not eroded. I really don't see any other option rather besides the one that this, um, this premises, these rooms were underwater for a very, very long time and it is actually the water that eroded them to such a degree. 
again, I'm not a professional in this field at all. I'm just trying to use my logic. And if uh, you, my listener, if you have any other suggestion of how this could have happened, please let me know in the comments of this video. Maybe I'm uh, missing some possible scenario. But even this photo for itself, I think it's one of the absolute proof about the amazing uh, old age of these structures. And um, here you see a photo of, um, of the floor. I don't know if it is in one of the next rooms or at other location. But these are like secondary crust formations on the floor, which are uh, absolutely hard. They have become like part of the rock. And it really looks like this has been a bot the bottom of some sort of ocean or sea or lake for extremely long time for this secondary crust formation to appear. Scientist Alexander Kaltepin, who actually opened my eyes for this amazing possibility um, that we have uh, real cities of the humans that are uh, that have been used some, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 million years ago. It's uh, really one of the most interesting places on Earth. Mm. So he says about this um, secondary crust formation on the floor that he couldn't get a sample to uh, make tests on it. But, I mean, this is... Uh, it, it it makes me think something. He couldn't get a sample because it's a, a protected place. It's an UNESCO site and <clears throat> all that. And uh, he couldn't get permission. So uh, this is an international uh, famous place. It, it is not some sort of minor archaeological site. So what? Nobody until now made tests on this crust. I mean, there aren't many things to be tested here. Most likely, um, the Turkish scientists and many of the others who have done research over there, most likely they have already made these tests. And where are the results? The results are nowhere to be found. They are not published. I, there is no information about such results. Why? Most probably because the results revealed what can one conclude even without making them, that this has been underwater for a very, very long time. This is um, at least a pre-flood structure, which already makes it, you know, more than 10, 12,000 years old. And even God knows um, through how many floods it has been, maybe not only one when, when we are talking about millions of years, because the case that I'm trying to make with this video after all is that these uh, rock formations, these this underground tunnels and um, uh, structures were carved into the rock before it was um, covered with this um, later on the additional um, geological layers which do not contain any uh, underground cities at all. I really noticed many things which prove um, that um, the um, rooms were carved before that. Most likely when uh, tests on the crusts, um, there are also other crusts when most likely did such tests were made. They didn't fit at all with uh, what they write in the history books, that uh, uh, only a couple of millions of years ago we were monkeys and that we discovered fire one million of years ago, which, I mean, this, this type of artifacts are such an um, absolute blow on all these theories that uh, most likely tests were made, but... Um, they were considered, um, as they say, inappropriate for public viewing. Have a look at this uh, so-called room. I mean, it has been a room, however, very, very long time ago. I mean, the one at the very top, like where the point of the pink arrow is. 
I mean, if this was carved, as the historians assure us, some whatever thousand or two or three thousand years ago, I mean, what is the logic? I really don't get. Somebody went to the top over there and decided, I'm going to make a room here right on the top. So he carved only like, <laughs> I don't know, the uh, few stripes for the future would be walls of the room. And then figure out, oh, there isn't um, any space to actually make floor. And uh, then he stopped making the room and he went uh, on the lower floor where we have another part of the room. And then he started making that room and made part of it. And then he noticed that, oh, now there is no space actually to make another wall. So he left it then. When, I mean, that that would have been um, the <laughs> only possibility if this was really carved one couple, just a couple of thousand of years ago, because the shape of these things changes very slowly. As we said, it's measured uh, with centimeters per thousand years. And again, um, remember the white hats I showed you in the beginning of the video? That was the situation four million years ago when the white stuff covered this formation, which at that time were already eroded. So really, I mean, um, the uh, uh, hypothesis that these things were carved a couple of thousand of years ago, no, it really doesn't stand any logic at all. Or at least I can see it if some of you can have other explanation, please, please let me know. Okay, uh, here we see again very similar situation. Uh, there was a room there. Uh, it, it wasn't just uh, outside decoration because you can see a slight remains on the right in the shadow that there was another wall. So there was a room here once upon a time. So where is the floor? I mean, the floor is completely worn out. This is really, really long time of erosion. And it's no way that it has happened a couple of times within two, three thousands of years. Because um, this kind of pointed cone-like formation, they've already uh, in a very similar shape. Uh, 4,000 years ago. So really all the facts show that these things have been carved uh, millions of years ago within the rock. Or what about these ruins? I mean, this, is take, this, this has taken really a lot of abuse by the time and the elements. I don't know if any comment is even needed at all. I mean, this has really, really has been around uh, for much more than a couple of thousand of years to get this type of erosion. Um, obviously, the water levels were uh, completely different as well at that time. It was a different world when these things were carved. Um, these are some photos from the Kikova Island, again in Turkey, where actually the uh, underground, what was underground cities once upon a time, descends even in the sea. And they, they continue underwater. I think this by itself only is, um, <clears throat> again, an absolute proof that these uh, things were not carved at uh, the recent water levels. Um, and at, at the very least, it proves that it was a pre-flood structure. Obviously, the, whatever, the Hittites or whomever they are trying to give the credit of building all this uh, uh, things. They didn't dive on the ground to carve rooms which they cannot use. No, they didn't do that. At the time the structures were carved, the water levels were completely different. This was really, really lo long time ago. One other point is 
that um, carving all these underground cities, first of all, is a great uh, engineering feat. Uh, I mean, that would be something even that uh, nowadays will be quite a task for our current, current culture and civilization. How they did it, I, I don't want to even speculate. I really don't know. But one thing that one thing that comes to mind is um, the amount of stone that they practically quarried and had to uh, bring out of the earth to uh, have these tunnels made. It's a staggering uh, volume of stone. Not only it's very heavy how did they, you know, manage to take it out, but also where is it? I mean, that the total amount of all these cities and we have um, excavated God knows what uh, part of them it, it's possible that it is a small amount. Uh, they don't finish. We all, we only reach tunnels that are clogged with, uh, uh, you know, sediments and earth and fallen stones. So we haven't seen the end yet. But even the stones that would have come out at um, uh, from what we know, that is quite a large mountain as a volume. So where are they? If this was really built as um, the tour guides are trying to assure us in very recent times within the couple of thousand years where would they hide the stones it's they're too big to hide and usually they wouldn't even hide them but why would they transport them somewhere else uh, very far away to hide but they're not to be found at all anywhere in turkey or anywhere in the region. They're just absolutely absent. Not even a small bit of them. And um, because of the large amount of this, uh, so to say, excess material of stone, I would really agree with Alexander Koltepin who uh, makes this note that it is only, that the only possibility is that they were washed away by the waters of the Great Flood. I myself cannot think of any other force that could have uh, uh, taken away this mountain of rubble. If any of my listeners has any other idea, please let me know. But until um, I don't get such an idea, I will consider it as actually one of the um, proofs that these are much more ancient buildings than... Um, what are they presented to be uh, to us, like something recent built just a couple of thousand years ago? Um, while I was doing my, so to say, photo and video based research, I noticed um, a few other things. Now, on this particular picture, I, I kind of, when I saw it first, I felt there is something like wrong here, that there is something to be noticed here. And I looked at it a very, very long time, but I couldn't understand what it is exactly. And after a few days, it kind of really stuck me on my head as if, if it by itself. <sighs> What's wrong with this picture? What's wrong is that the stone this type of stone, I saw it on many other photos, how does it erode exactly. This is kind of a normal erosion, just see the lines on the right, on the left, they are kind of straight and how it, it, it's strange how it eroded this stone. I mean, this is not connected to the age of um, the um, tunnels, but I think um, maybe it can tell us a bit at least about the inhabitants who actually um, made them and lived there. And so the idea I'm getting here that it's possible that this is actually um, geopolymer concrete used as plaster. In other words, they didn't chisel this 
instruments in the solid rock. The solid rock is what we see on the very far right end of the photo. And the rest would have been a geopolymer plaster made of the powder of this very same stone, maybe like the leftover powder that was left over from the carving of the tunnels. And they could have known how to make um, this um, geopolymer and in this way easily make their home beautiful without having to chisel all these uh, ornaments. <clears throat> it would have been much easier to carve them within the soft um, cement or concrete, whatever uh, it, it qualifies to be. I'm not sure. I'm really not a specialist in these things. It's just an idea. I, I don't know if um, uh, it's a hypothesis. This is not any kind of proof, but it's kind of a um, thing that crossed my mind. And um, it seems that there is some evidence that the geopolymers were widely used in Egypt. So why not? Uh, uh, why not even uh, whatever? I don't know how many millions of years ago. Is it uh, four or forty? It wouldn't make much difference for me anyway. <laughs> 4 or 40. And um, the other one that I noticed uh, is, um, and on the other photo that um, the two photos um, here also looks really like some sort of uh, plaster, this thing on the ceiling especially. And uh, could have been a geopolymer, what else? Um, and the other one, the other observation that um, came to my mind while I was browsing, browsing these pictures is, um, do you notice um, the small window above the door? Of course, the door is uh, recent. Uh, apparently, this is being used nowadays. The wooden door is recent, but notice the small, um, and of course the crosses are from the Christian, the red crosses on the top are from the Christian time. The early Christians did use the tunnels, that is beyond doubt. Uh, but my main point is the small window above the door. Probably this was the original window above the door. But then notice the kind of oval arch-like decoration above the door. Obviously, these are completely uh, non-matching elements of design. These were not um, designed together. They are from completely different construction stages. And there are clearly various different construction stages on these underground cities. All the archaeologists at least agree on this point. And um, if you, uh, maybe I should have put a photo of this room. This is only half a room. The rest is missing since a very long time. So obviously even that carved decoration on the top and those um, stone niches where the paintings appear, the paintings were later on, but the stone niches must have been there millions of years ago. So apparently they are not Christian works, so they must have been with some of the original users of the tunnels millions of years ago. And so is the very uh, small window above the door. So apparently, in the very, very old times, there were at least two different um, cultures or maybe two different uh, races of humans that were inhabiting the tunnels and had their own completely uh, different idea about how they should decorate them. And later on, when I read the full article of Alexander Kultepin on his uh, research on these sites, uh, he confirmed actually my observation that um, at least two, uh, he concluded that at least 
two different races of men have inhabited these tunnels within the very, very far distant past. And um, one of them is um, actually like us, our size, because they can find out what height of humans have been designing those quarters by the height of um, the toilets, for example, and other utilities, so to say, <laughs> different, you know, how they put their shelves and other things, how to high are the doors, such details. And apparently there were two types of people. One of them are uh, were like us, and the others were um, uh, rather small. I forgot the name of this uh, um, English scientists who made this uh, specific research and concluded that some of the people living there were quite specific, he said, of uh, <coughs> quite specific appearance. That's he, how he formulated it. It means they were dwarfs. They were <coughs> maybe one meter high or a meter and a half, something like that. Um, which is not at all uh, amazing that this is uh, not, uh, dwarves are not uh, some sort of a legend, their reality of those who don't know there were uh, full islands discovered in Indonesia or was it in, where was it exactly in the region over there. Um, islands were inhabited and, and that was not in the very far distant past. It was quite a recent uh, um, culture that existed. Plenty of skeletons are found. So dwarves really existed. However, uh, apparently there is scientific research, but they don't publish this type of research in the uh, tourist information on Cappadocia for some reason. And I guess the reason is that, uh, yes, they are dwarves. However, apparently the time of dwarves wasn't that near in the past <laughs> when they lived in uh, Europe or whatever, near Europe in the Turkish uh, region. So I guess that's why they don't... Uh, uh, tell us and didn't tell me when I visited the site uh, many years ago. And now at the end, I would like to comment a bit on the usual tourist information. And the usual information that is given about these underground cities uh, from the point of view of the so-called official archaeology, what, how they present things. They, um, I mean, the things, the conclusions that I made myself after looking a few hours at various pictures, I'm sure the professional archaeologists have figured them out in a few minutes after they have seen the sites. And um, so it's not that I discovered these things. Many people who are professionals, they know them very well. So after knowing about all this research, what do they tell people? Okay, so if you open uh, the official information, you will see that these are uh, some unusual rock formations, they call them, with um, usually they will say mesmerizing churches from the early Christians. And the first human remains in this area are about two, three thousand years old. What? <laughs> and um, and yes, that's um, that's how deep they go. Some of them may mention that the tunnels are of an unknown origin, that we don't know anything about their how they appeared and when. I find it very strange how it is possible that so many historians studied them for so many years and they don't know anything and I just looked at some pictures and I found uh, so many things. That is rather fishy, isn't it? And although they don't know anything, still they are telling us many things like, 
first of all, they were built so that people will hide from their enemies. And how did they know that if they don't know anything why, uh, who and why and when build them? It's quite a mystery. And uh, what, what is quite interesting for me actually, after thinking a, a bit about this statement that they were made to, uh, you know, uh, as hiding places from some enemy, just look at this particular photo and think for yourself. If you're hiding from an enemy, how, for, for what reason on earth you will perforate, uh, chisel this rock with so many uh, windows and doors all around it? I mean, this is ridiculous. This is really beyond all logic. How will it work for hiding? I I was thinking a long time, and the only way it could make sense is like this. Okay, you chisel all your hiding place to look like a total circus. <laughs> and then you hide there, and you expect that when your enemy approaches nearby, uh, of course, this is the first thing the enemy will notice, is this extremely strange <laughs> perforated all over rock. So the enemy must decide that you are totally crazy and either he is supposed to get scared because of that and run away or he must decide that you are not worthy of chasing anymore because you are crazy. <laughs> I mean, these were the uh, like the only two possibilities in which all this idea of hiding from the enemy could work <laughs> with this type of rocks. I think it's quite ridiculous to uh, tell people such things that they were hiding from the enemies and <laughs> built all this. Of course, if any of you uh, have any other idea about how could it work in, the, in regards of hiding from the enemy, <laughs> I will be most welcome to uh, listen to such explanations. It will be interesting. But back on the serious side, why are they, they telling us uh, in the tourist guides that these were hiding places? I think the only reason they are doing that is just not to look stupid and to tell us anything so that we have the feeling, oh yes, we have it all figured out as usual. And uh, be satisfied with whatever they have told us, although it makes no sense at all, even. What to tell us? It's difficult. They, they had to, you know, what, what, what to think. So because many of the structures are on the ground, they told us a fairy tale that um, people who don't pay close attention to all details will easily believe. Oh, many of them are underground. So people must have been hiding, and actually many people believe such things. Other thing they tell us is that these were temporary dwellings, supposedly while people were hiding. But um, again, I must say that I uh, agree with Alexander Kaltepin more, and he says that um, these really don't look like uh, temporary, but rather like permanent dwellings. And there is a good possibility that even full generations were born and lived <clears throat> their full lives in such underground condition because of Ice Age or, I don't know, roaming dinosaurs, or I have no clue why. But for some reason, they lived underground. And his... Uh, uh, idea is based on the fact that these underground cities are not isolated from each other. It's like a full network covering uh, this region. And um, they are connected with each other with long tunnels. I mean, tens of kilometers. I don't know. Maybe it could be even hundreds. I'm, I'm not really good in numbers. But it, it is really long distance. Nobody would make... Uh, this type of endeavor, unless it was meant for, unless he really needed it for some purpose. 
And I mean, even nowadays, when we have uh, some sort of more sophisticated technology, we don't know if our technology is better than these people's technology who build them. But let's assume that's the case. Even though we do have the technology, I mean, who of us will just for fun start digging holes in the ground, even with equipment? Uh, this is this is not something that people do just for fun, especially for rather large holes, uh, rather long holes that are long tens of uh, uh, kilometers. So um, it, it really seems like more logical that these were actually a residence meant for uh, extended use, for permanent living. Okay, one more proof that uh, these tunnels were chiseled out in the rock millions of years ago before these rocks were covered with the um, upper layers of uh, volcanic rock. Uh, is that some of the remains, you know, small whatever remains of walls and shapes from the buildings, they actually stick the upper layer of basalt which got formed on the top of them whatever at least four million years ago this is um, um apparently this is not very easy to show on photo because um you know it, it is in the basalt top of basalt layer and um, I'm showing you a few photos that I found on Alexander Kultipin's website. Um, actually, you may need to pause this video and look at um, the photos that I got from his uh, website. And if you look very carefully, you will see uh, how small remains of um, like the structures of these tunnels kind of stick out within the top basalt layer. Why are they so small? Um, well, they must be small because apparently when that basalt was poured from the volcano, those things were on, on ground level and the maximum we could have at that time on, on the ground level is a part of one floor uh, already eroded. God knows how many floors have evaporated, have eroded and completely disappeared before that volcano sealed it all. But it is normal that uh, s small uh, pieces of these walls literally stick within the ba upper basalt. Uh, layer and this by itself is quite a solid proof about the fact that these were indeed uh, homes that are millions of years old. If you're interested how many millions of years exactly maybe you can visit uh, Alexander Kultepin's website. He's the only one that I found uh, who has published a serious research on these archaeological uh, sites online. And uh, his website is earthbeforeflood.com. Unfortunately, very small portion of it is translated in English. It's uh, originally a Russian website. Some of the translation is uh, um, kind of good. Other parts are uh, rather amateur attempts of a translation, but um, still, I, I find it amazing that uh, uh, he's doing this work and he's my favorite scientist at the moment. <laughs> it is quite brave of him to publish this type of information. But for me, it it uh, wouldn't make any difference, is it five or 50 millions of years ago? The important is, I mean, it's, it's just so inspiring that we can go uh, 
to Turkey, which is not very far away from Europe, where at least I am, and see the places where people lived such a long time ago, the time of the dinosaurs. Again, um, maybe I'm repeating myself from the other videos, but we, we are not these bodies, we are spirit, spirit souls, eternal souls, particles of God that are kind of plugged in for a given lifetime within a certain body for educational purpose. And um, although this this body is just like an outfit for us, it's like a dress, a costume, it is not our real self, still it's it's not unimportant and the fact that we have been plugged in into a, such an ancient and glorious species as the human species I mean, it, it's interesting to know more about our species. We, we were not monkeys at that time. <laughs> These um, ancient underground cities are not the only proof of um, human uh, civilization along with the dinosaur uh, species, I mean, that type of historic period. There are plenty of uh, footprints of humans uh, along dinosaurs and hundreds of other historic artifacts, uh, very um, scientifically categorized and described with reference and everything in um, Michael Kremel's book, uh, what was it? Forbidden Archaeology? And that is a must read. I think there is a movie as well. So, um, th there are plenty of evidence that um, uh, there were humans at that time. We were humans already at that time. And probably a much more advanced human race than what we are currently at this moment. So, besides the overwhelming amount of uh, scientific and archaeological proof about the true um, history of our race, something completely different is taught in schools. And people naively believe it, in the same way as I, I naively believe that the Christian, chisel, the early Christians chiseled all these tunnels simply because the tour guides told me that many years ago when I visited this uh, site. And why, um, why exactly they assure us that we were monkeys? The important point is not that we were monkeys, according to them. The important, they want to put this idea within our heads so that they can make us like monkeys now. Uh, you can see details on that uh, 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 supposed um, way uh, course of evolution in the future on 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 the picture. 